Well, here we go. They let us come back once again. Rob Woodfork, Dave Preston, George Wallace. In fact, he is just back after drinking 10 bottles of water because he was at OTAs with the commanders. That must mean it's DC Sports Huddle Time, sponsored by MGM National Harbor. It's time to change the game. Change the game at Bet MGM Sports. We appreciate their support. We'll start right there. George Wallace, it's the commanders. Uh, they haven't sorted out a new stadium yet. We don't know if anything's uh, changed from week to week, but it, but it's OTAs, organized team activities. Uh, we should be excited, right? Uh, sure. If you, I mean, yeah, we could be excited <laughs> about it. Look, it's uh, it's 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 football, and people that love football are, are very excited about. It. I'll tell you what, though, it felt like training camp out there today for sure. Uh, I will thank Ron Rivera for having it early in the morning. Other than that, but uh, other than that, no. Uh, look, the story today. Um, Chase Young is back with his team, uh, not participating yet, but he did speak after uh, practice to us. He said that he is uh, rehabbing. He says he's on schedule. He's rehabbing in Colorado. It just happens to be where he and his team and Dr. Andrews decided was the best place to do. And he's been back and forth, but he says he is on schedule. And he says, look out, basically, I'm rehabbing fast. He doesn't want to give a timetable on it. And Ron Rivera hasn't given a timetable either, but the fact that he was back in the building today is big for uh, the coaching staff and for Chase because he said he watched the last bit of practice, the 11 on 11s with Jack Del Rio, and he's talking, he's watching Montez sweating, kind of helping him. And he's, he says he's learning. Look, he's only his third year in the league, so he can still learn from watching. Remember Mike Shanahan, those mental reps. Remember those mental reps? Uh, so you can still learn uh, from doing that. And, he, and he's, he says that it's been a big help. And Ron Rivera said to us today that having him back as a leader is a positive thing as well so the other guys can see look terry mclaurin we know his situation he's not going to be on the field anytime soon but chase young out back rehabbing some at the facility was a big thing and carson wentz look guys you know again it's may or, or june today but and you're still in shorts and helmets but everybody to a man is very impressed with how fast carson wentz has picked up this offense and the way he releases the football they're not taking a shot at anybody else, Ryan Fitzpatrick or Taylor Heineke, but they've been very impressed with the leadership and how fast Carson Wentz has picked up this offense and able to do more things, expand the playbook, as Ron Rivera said. So if you want to believe that from early on, this early in the offseason, as a fan, that's a positive. Look, he could I, be good I, at I picking think, up offenses. Well, He's on his third team in three years. <laughs> no, but but having said that, that that is a positive. That is a positive. Yeah. That that uh, what I'm saying is uh, that's no surprise to me. This is not his first rodeo. And to your point, he's been around the NFL. The question is, is the fit and opportunity with Washington going to be right? Because I don't think he forgot how to play quarterback no. or win games in the NFL. He's done that. He knows that. So that's why you go in, I think, with a glass half full, uh, knowing that, look, he's done this before. There's no reason why he can't have success here. Only time will tell if that's going to be the case. But yeah. I still think defense will have to be the driving force with this team. And actually, Rob's just trying to be negative. Rob's just trying no, to be no, negative. No, actually, no. I'm, he just, I'm he's still wants, just because I'm not talking about Cam Newton. He no. just still wants to be negative. No, no, no. Rob and I agree. We're agreeing. We're just saying it a different <laughs> no, way, I'm, right? No, I'm actually going to give you a positive. I was listening to Greg Cosell the other day, and he was saying that Carson Wentz is probably a better fit it for this particular offense, this, uh, you know, North Turner uh, sort of uh, hybrid offense, he's probably a better fit for this than he was in the West Coast scheme that they ran in uh, Philadelphia and in Indianapolis. So there is, from an X's and O's standpoint, there is an opportunity for him to have sort of a career rebirth and maybe even surpass the level that he played at in uh, 2017 I just I, the question that I have has never been the talent and never that they were going to be impressed by him now in you know but, in, in installation process are they still going to be impressed with him in November and December is he going to stay healthy number one and number two is he going to get his head right so that he can be the kind of guy that his talent mandates that he be right and, and real quick I think I think the biggest thing here too guys is to keep in mind too this was not you know, this isn't the sexy trade. This is not what the fans wanted. So it's not that he doesn't know how to play football. If we get the Carson from, you know, early Philly and even early last year in Indy, everybody's going to be very happy. Yeah, and right. if he can play that way, there are playmakers on this team that they can succeed. And I think it's just, you know, everybody was just down on it because it's Carson Wentz. It's not the Russell Wilson they want. It's not Deshaun Watson, you know. So I, I, I think 
just taking a step back and looking at it, I think that's where a lot of this has come from. It's not like the guy has forgotten, we hope not, how to play football. And to your point, like he, you know, he succeeded in Philly. He was doing very well last year in Indy. The Carson Wentz you don't want is the one whose mind isn't right, as Rob was just talking about, and the one that lost to Jacksonville in the last game of the year last year when they needed to win to get in the playoffs. But that's all I'm saying in agreeing. With, I think we're all agreeing somehow. No, I think, is, so. I think he's, so. yeah. he's had, he has a body of work that says he can do it. He can yeah. do it. And that's a big thing because you know what? There's some people that get to this level and they can't do it. And that's right. in all sports. It, it's, it's fine lines. And by the way, you mentioned Deshaun Watson. I was just thinking about this today with all due respect and sensitivity. Uh, he, he would not be a fit for this franchise given all the other yeah. stuff it's going through. Never was. Off, off and never was and, and never will be. But that's just a side note. You're all right. right. Dave Preston, before we, we're going to jump to the NBA finals, but yeah. any, 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 I know when it comes to OTAs, you like to jump in and I did, I'm sorry if we monopolize the time. I, I feel that OTAs is, it's akin to the first day of a major tournament in golf where you, you, you can't necessarily win, but you can get boots. And I think that, you know, we haven't seen any major disasters in a couple of weeks. Nobody's shouting at the media, no fights on the field. Uh, Carson Wentz is good. And that's great. Uh, I think if he had been throwing the ball at guys' feet the entire time or disagreeing with the offense was being run, that would be a story. There is no story there. Chase Young showing up to practice this week. Absolutely awesome. And he mentioned earlier today when George and the other members of the media were uh, interviewing him, hey, I'm standing right next to Jack Del Rio. We're talking about the different plays, the different things that we're doing defensively. It's very important for him to be there, not just for himself, but for the other guys to see, all right, this is one of this is what one of our leaders is doing. So that's a very positive thing right there. And again, these guys are running around in shorts. So we'll learn how good this team is in September. But Right now, let's say they, uh, you know, akin to golf, it's uh, say, uh, you know, Max Homa going out and shooting a 70 as opposed to a 78, which means the dude's toast. I, I disagree. I think OTAs are more like the sponsor exemption day of a <laughs> golf <laughs> tournament. It's, uh, but so we, we could debate that. That's that all the time. But a very good analogy. But I'll, yeah. you'll take the round one. I take oh, the sponsor exemption real, day. Uh, real, real, uh, real quick before we move off the commanders. I think uh, 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 speaking to Chase Young today, or at least Chase Young speaking to us today, I think is a reminder. We we've talked a lot about how you know, this is the big year three and uh, how Ron Rivera expects to see a jump and all of that. But this is also a big year three for Chase Young individually, because mm -hmm. to this point, he has not lived up to his draft status. He has not lived up to the hype. Injury, of course, has a lot to do with that. But uh, th this is going to be a season that he's going to have to really break out and, uh, and make a lot of noise in order to, uh, uh, you know, really make it make that pick worthwhile, make that, that needed to be a home run pick and number two. And especially when you see what they got in uh, San Diego uh, with the quarterback there, uh, the, you know, Chase Young needs to be a generational talent and uh, year three needs to be the time where that light comes on. And I, I know rehabbing from an injury is not ideal, but uh, he does need to have that big season. And I, right. Rob, I th on that point, I think he does need to have a big season. I think he does have some wiggle room if the defense is is back to what it was his rookie year. And he's he's not a superstar, but the reason why he's not putting up all these numbers is because he's drawing those double and triple teams. Then that's good. But if he's an average player on a on a subpar defense, then that is a disaster. So it can go in one of two directions. He, if he's an elite player on a bad defense or if he's a you know decent defender on a very good defense, that's good. There's that fourth square, though, where he's not producing and neither is the defense. That's what we fear this year, especially coming off of the injury. See, I knew it. I knew it. Eight minutes into a conversation that started on OTAs, we'd get to some real meat and substance as Rob and Dave flushed it out on the Chase Young. So you start with OTAs. It may take a while, but we get cooking yeah, we get and we're done. But we're, because we've got another, let's see, uh, 52 weeks to talk about the, the commanders for the for the rest of the way. <laughs> NBA Finals. It is 75th anniversary season. Nice job by the NBA to, to, to script the original uh, dynasty, the Celtics in there against the <laughs> Golden State Warriors, the new dynasty, or, or somebody called them the debutantes against the whatever. But, I mean, the point being, 
the NBA is great made for television. Somehow they scripted this just like when they fixed it. So Patrick Ewing may be picked by the New York Knicks with the number one pick. That'll get conspiracy theorists going. I heard that uh, somewhere. B- b- mm-hmm. back, back in the 80s. But uh, we'll talk about a marquee matchup to have for your 75th anniversary Celtics and Warriors. But I also just throw this out before we get to the finals. I think minus LeBron James, this has been one of the more intriguing playoffs uh, in recent memory. And I think that speaks to the strength of the league. Anybody have any thoughts on that? I'm going to agree with that, David. I, and I've heard a few people mention, a few people who are older and who have covered this game a lot longer than I have, that this reminds them of the NBA of the 70s, minus all the rigmarole outside the game, but one where you didn't necessarily have a dynasty like the Celtics of the 60s or the Lakers of the 80s or the Bulls or or the, you know, the Lakers part two or what have you, or Golden State now, but a lot of different teams that were capable of winning a seven game series, depending on what happened in the last two minutes of each game, like you had in the seventies, where you had multiple teams making the finals, contending, winning championships. The then bullets made the finals, I believe uh, four times, you know, from 1971 through 79 and uh, won the championship in 78. So this has that feel of, where, okay, yes, the you know Golden State, they're the favorite, and yes, the Celtics are the hottest team since January when I, I think they were under 500, but they won 33 of their last 43 regular season games. But if you had said, hey, it's going to be the, the, the Heat and the Mavericks in the finals, you know, I would have said, okay, I can easily buy that, as opposed to when you have dynasties in motion, you would knew that it would take, uh, you knew that it would take an act of nature for Shaq and Kobe not to get to the finals. Unfortunately, that active nature was their egos clashing at one point but so this has been a very entertaining nba uh, postseason and that's what i kind of miss when you have the dynasty you can almost go on autopilot in april and may i think as a viewer as a fan as somebody who covers these games we have really been rewarded by following each step of the way and seeing how the warriors have gotten this far same case with the celtics well and it, indeed and i go ahead george Rob, no, I was I was going to say I agree with I agree with that in the sense that yes, we didn't go in with one like heavy favorite. I remember growing up watching the Chicago Bulls. Like for me, it was a foregone conclusion that the Bulls were going to win. It was just a matter of how many games they were going to do it. So yeah, we we did have a more wide open uh, field. The only nit that I have to pick is that there was a lot of blowouts. So there was a lot of games that were just completely unwatchable because. Uh, teams were losing by 30 40 50 points uh so other than that yes i i would agree that it was a wide open uh uh uh, tournament and we are getting what i think is is a good matchup uh in the finals why why is it a good matchup i think it's a good matchup because it's sort of the uh and i hate to call golden state old school because they're really not but it's like sort of the established team that you've known about for a long time the celtics yes historically are the team uh, that have, you know, won a lot of titles and so forth, but that's a young team and they have some up and coming talent, uh, guys that aren't necessarily household names like a Steph Curry or a, a, a Clay Thompson, or, or some of these guys who have been in the finals, uh, now six out of the last eight years. So, uh, so yeah, so I, I think it's a good matchup from a basketball standpoint, they split the regular season series. And so uh, I think it's good from a uh, basketball standpoint. It's not a good matchup for the Celtics, but I think it's a good matchup for uh, uh, in terms of the basketball. All right. Who wins, who loses, how many games? I got, uh, I got golden state and I would be surprised if it takes them more than six games to do it just because of the experience factor, 120, what is it? 123 games, 123, of nothing to nothing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah. And that's so a big deal. I, I'm, I'm going to say the experience factor alone, even though the Celtics are younger and, and probably, uh, you know, from, uh, I don't want to say they're more talented, but they're, they're comparable talent wise, but the experience factor is going to, is going to be the difference here. George. I got, I got Golden State as well in six. I, I, I'm, I'm excited to watch it, though. You got the Splash Brothers. You got Tatum, Brown, Horford. Look, let's give also credit, by the way, to Brad Stevens. I mean, the guy steps down, steps into the front office, makes a hire, gets Al Horford back, and these Celtics who were left for dead in the middle of the year yep. are back. So I think Brad Stevens gets a lot of credit for this. But I'm just gonna, it's going to be entertaining. I think, to your point about the 123 to nothing as far as NBA Finals experience, I think that has to play into it. You can say, yeah, you're just playing loose. You're not supposed to be here and this and that. But when those lights come on in the finals, I can imagine never having played in NBA finals myself, but I can imagine that it's uh, it's probably a, a pretty big deal. And look, 
since Clay Thompson got hurt back to back, he's been on a mission. This team has been on a mission to get back to the finals. They are there now. They want to prove one, they can do it without KD as well. Let's not forget about that as well. So uh, I think they're on a mission, and I think Golden State wins it in six. And I think they, Celtics are not just foils either. I mean, that's no. a pretty really strong. This is this is that uh, that, that uh, old school offense versus defense. Uh, sort of uh, series, so I think that Boston is gonna is gonna give them a little bit, but ultimately it's Golden State. Dave Preston, I've got the uh, Warriors winning in six. Not much to the dismay of my oh. Southie. He's wicked upset. The this, Boston guy. This is as upset as he's been since Kathleen from Quincy left him from Carlton uh, in uh, Cambridge and changed her name to Cat. Here, here's what concerns me with the Celtics. Back-to-back seven-game series. So they're going to be dragging just like they did in their series against the uh, Heat where they lost game one. Uh, the Warriors are, are fresh, and they're also more experienced. And I think their Boston's mission was to kind of decide to figure out who they were this year. The Warriors' mission this year is to get back to what they were. And we know how good they can be. I also think that with the three-point shooting arsenal that uh, the Warriors have, when they're on, they can easily blow by you. The Celtics are more of a grinding team that even if they're beating you and even if they're playing better over a quarter, they might only be up eight to 12 points. If Golden State is playing better than you over a quarter, it might be a 20-point margin. But here's where I think that the Celtics might have an advantage. Their size, their ability to take punches, their path, they beat Brooklyn who was a preseason favorite, but even though they weren't, they were a shell of their former selves, they weren't your traditional sevens in that first round. They beat defending champ Milwaukee in the next round. And then they beat Miami, who just a very tough out, very well coached. The culture with Pat Riley, Eric Spolstra, a very difficult team to get uh, beyond. And they won a game seven on the road. So those are reasons why if I I have uh, causes for confidence that Boston might be able to pull the upset. Here's the biggest cause for confidence. The Warriors have never won an NBA championship. The Golden State Warriors have never won an NBA championship when Jerry Brown has not been the governor of California. He was the governor in 2015, 2017, 2018, and in 1975. Governor Moonbeam was their secret weapon when we never even knew it. He was out of office in 2019, and they lost in the finals. Book it. Wow. Now, that, that's a stat. And Thank you. Thank you, and good night. And by the way, you should have married Linda Ronstadt because they did date yes. in the 70s the ah, first time around. Was he what thinking? He, what, right. What was he thinking? Uh, the, uh, before our time, George. No, uh, uh, let me tell you something. I um, <laughs> this <laughs> That's a tough one, segue to go from uh, Governor yeah, Moonbeam. I, I don't know what, you, what else you got. Uh, no, Governor Moonbeam. Who, was it Ronald Reagan that dubbed him that? Or I somebody? forget who called him that. Yeah, but yeah, uh, anyway. I mean, but the bottom line is the Warriors and Celtics, as, as I started this this thesis with that, uh, it's a it's a great showcase for the NBA 75th. I think it is going to be a good series. I think it will go seven games because uh, I believe the Warriors will win it in seven for the experience factor we talked about. And part of that is the coach. And this is no disrespect to the Celtics coaching, but this is about Steve Kerr. He learned how to be a champion as a player. He has put that onto his players as a coach and how he uses players, uh, the Kevon Looney's, the Jordan Poole's, uh, Otto Porter uh, is, is now found some life with the Golden State Warriors. So I, I've seen this firsthand that that he is, in, 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 along with having elite talent, he is a masterful coach and it will be a seven game series that I believe the Celtics will show that they have a young and up and coming coach and, and they have something to give, but the Warriors have that experience edge. Having said that, as you just described, going up against the Miami Heat, the Celtics have what we always talk about a Wizards broadcast. We wish we had that that certain dog, that that nastiness, the, the, the toughness. It, and it's it's not, I don't mean uh, an illegal, anything illegal. It's just a certain edge that you cannot just add water and it happens. And Marcus Smart, to me, drives a lot of that for the Boston Celtics. And, and he is an X factor uh, in this series. So that's why I don't think the Celtics are going to be an easy out uh, for the Warriors. But in the end, with you look with you look at the way Steve Kerr uses that team and the talent he has, uh, they will prevail in seven. But the numbers have been great, and we're looking forward to, to watching it. I say numbers. They've been getting like $12 million for some of these uh, oh, yeah. games, which is incredible on television. All right, Audible at the line of scrimmage. Final thoughts from anyone? Uh, we'll start with I'm, George since he's got I'm, it. George. I have 20 seconds. Shout out to the Terps. My school, get it done. Men's lacrosse. 
Only loss in the last two years was last year's title game to Virginia. They go unbeaten this time this year and uh, set some records. So big shout out to them and uh, winning the national championship. See you next week. Okay, Dave Preston. Well, we're, we'll talk a little tennis. A fantastic match, a uh, five-set marathon between Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic in the French Open uh, men's quarterfinal round. It was stuck on the tennis channel. Who's running this? That's that's those, two of the three best players ever to be involved in the sport, and it's, it's 17 people can watch it. It would be akin to having the NBA Finals on True TV. Not the first and second round of the tournament, but the finals on True TV, and that would, of course, preempt hair jacked and impractical jokes. I'd have to Google what True TV is anyway. I only know what it is at the NCAA tournament. Uh, Rob. What? No, same. And uh, I'm sure we're going to get some calls from True TV people. Um, <laughs> so I, I actually have uh, two uh, brief ones. Number one, the NBA uh, with the hiring of Darvin Ham, who I know Dave knows from his time with the Wizards. Yes. Darvin Ham, the new uh, head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers, brings the total of black coaches in the NBA to 15. That is uh, pretty close to half the league. And so this half the league. Yeah, right. That is half the league. And so NFL, uh, pay attention. The other thing is uh, the uh, the announcement today that the new Madden video game will have John Madden himself on the front for the first time since the uh, since Madden 2000 back in 1999. Absolutely appropriate. They should keep it that way forever because the late great John Madden, I mean, he was an innovator in so many ways. We talked a lot about him uh, immediately after his passing here on this show. And so uh, uh, that was absolutely a bravo for that. Keep him on there forever. Well, and uh, let me uh, along those lines with the, the hiring of Darvin Ham, by the way, who just a terrific guy when he was with the Wizards and he, he had some great slam dunks. So it was nothing like calling a ham slam oh, as uh, he used to oh, do it, but so what, what a wonderful guy, but I want to give a shout out to our late owner uh, of the Washington Bullets and, and Wizards, Abe Pullen. In 1973, he hired Casey Jones and Bernie Bickerstaff. It was an all minority coaching staff in 1973. And that was Abe Pullen. And there was, I don't know anybody else doing that in pro sports at that time. And they had some success with Casey Jones. And, and of course, Bernie Bickerstaff went on to an amazing uh, front office career, which, by the way, I still see Bernie. He's scouting for different teams. He's going to be 95 years old in a press box looking at players. I mean, My he's shout a lifer, out, man. He's a lifer. Oh, he's, he's a lifer. Yeah. And, he and, never and, hang and, up the whistle. And, and, and just the first class. And, and again, Darvin so, Ham as a dunker, dude. He was oh, so oh, cool. And then, uh, didn't he? Did, he, broke a, he broke a backboard in college, yeah. right? Yeah. No, yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, believe me, he is. I'm so, gl so I'm so sick. glad he was a nice guy because he could pick you up with one hand. He was so strong. <laughs> I, and I'll leave it with, I don't know what the result is going to be as we tape this, but the Ukraine, uh, Ukraine's uh, national soccer team is, is still alive for a World Cup spot as we speak. They're in a playoff with Scotland. But I, I think it's significant as we talk about all these things. These players, uh, they actually wanted to stop the World Cup qualifying campaign and join the military, many of them. They wanted to fight for their country, including and led by their 64-year-old head coach who said, I have to go defend my homeland and the Russian invasion. And they told him, but you're 64 and you don't have any military skills. Deliver us the World Cup. So as the world keeps spinning and, and we have so much fun, there's also some real challenges going on um that we can't even imagine the reasons why but uh, a shout out to the perseverance of the of the U ukrainian people and and specifically their soccer team because it's it's a situation we can't even uh, imagine on that note uh we appreciate your time this week on the mgm national harbor dc sports huddle it's sponsored by mgm national harbor it's time to change game at bet mgm sports for george wallace who's doing a sports cast somewhere in a secure location dave preston and Rob Waterfork, I'm Dave Johnson. Break.